Welcome everybody. You're watching and listening to Making Life Brighter and the Winifred Adams Show all in one because we're going to put it everywhere. And I want to welcome back our special guest, Grammy winning Mr. Chuck Ebert from Exxon Ebert Entertainment. He is the super duper producer and hit songwriter and hit song producer. And he has a number one right now. Welcome back, Chuck. Hey, glad to be here. Absolutely awesome. Fantastic. And uh, thanks for having me on the show, Winnie. I just, I love you so much and I'm glad to be a part. Get to broadcast from the cabin. So Woo! you get to right see the, the studio. <laughs> we love it. Chuck and I have spent time at the Grammys together and this year he's up for a few. So let's talk about that first. Let's jump right in. Tell us about right. uh, what's on the, what's on the table for voting this year. Woo! Well, we're going to have three records in contention this year, which is pretty amazing for me. And normally you get one or, or if I'm lucky, maybe two, but this year, three. And three. right now I have one record that Busy is boy, just it got released Friday. <laughs> Unbelievable. Got released Friday. It's called Y'all Shut Up. It's by comedian Chad Prather, international, world renowned. It's gone number one on iTunes. Woo. It's gone number one on Amazon. It has blown in three, it was two days and it went number one. And the third day went number one, like everywhere. So we are ecstatic and it's going to be on the Grammy ballot this year. So we are hoping for the best for that one. That's pretty amazing. Good for you. Good for you. So what's it all about? Well, the, the rec that's the first for that record is pretty awesome. It's a, it's very humorous. It's a comedy album. It's, but it's done differently. It hasn't been done like this before. <laughs> it is stand up comedy right into the music. So, and the music is absolutely cool. funny. I got to write it with Chad. We had a blast writing the songs. There are some funny some titles, Bumpin' Cousins. Oh, it's <laughs> funny. Bumpin' Cousins. <laughs> Motel wrong. 6. Oh, you just got to hear it. And, uh, oh, uh, Flip You Like a Pancake. You'll just oh, have to no. hear it. They're so funny. Oh, They're hilarious. God. And it's, I call it PG-13. It's, it, there's, there, it's, there, it's not explicit. Nothing bad like that. There's some, you know, fun things that you listen to and decide if you, uh, she was Tulsa spelled backwards. Think okay. about it. Think about it. Oh, but I'm saying that's, that's the kind of stuff it's on. And it's funny. It's really humorous. So uh, yeah, great <laughs> record all the way. Way to go, Chad. Number one, that fast. Jeff Foxworthy's already said, oh my gosh. And uh, I think uh, Larry the Cable Guy's already chimed in and said, wow, Chad, just congratulations. So yeah, the big ones are uh, back in Chad too as well. He's, he's an amazing guy, very smart man and a lovely person. Just enjoy the time with him. Congratulations and Thank congratulations you. to Chad. And, and maybe he can come on sometime too. And oh, yeah. uh, you've just had a run of it, to be honest with you. I mean, we've been chronicling this and what you've been doing for a little while. And Let's talk about that run from beginning to end so people catch up because we have people listening and re-listening to all of Jeff Claiborne's music. Give us the lowdown, Chuck. Jeff, all right, here you go. I'll give you a quick thing on this too. Jeff, uh, which I've got to work with for years now, just you know, so a few years we've really been working stuff. He went number one in Europe, which was awesome, Woo! and broke top ten here in the United States. His his record was called Good Bartender. He has a, a song that's called Daddy's Gloves, that is going to be on a Grammy contending album, which is called Rooted in Song, an American Music Experience. Daddy's Gloves is gonna be on that. So, so here's Jeff again, I've been working with him, and he's going to be on this album that's up for Grammy contention, Best Americana Record, so album. I think it's just, yeah, way love to go, Jeff. JC. Yeah, we fantastic. He's, he's a great guy, oh, and he, awesome. he really brought it home. You guys, you guys hit it out of the ballpark with that whole series. We, we team. have had a blast and uh, got to tour, do things with him. We've really been building his brand. And of course, when COVID hit, that stopped all the touring. We had a giant showcase for him oh. in Nashville, getting ready to play all, I mean, literally it was in February and getting ready to play everywhere. I'm a book all over and boom, you know, it hits and everything stops, but we didn't, we still got writing. We still been doing all the backside of things, still got things we're booking in the future, but you know, it, it, it really hurt the industry all over, but I got to say it let a lot of people come in the studio, record and do stuff. So it's been great. And you're asking about the back end stuff. My gosh, I've been a whirlwind here doing music all over the place. And uh, we've got to spend time, of course, at the Grammys. That's a big part of music and, and get things. With your piano to do scarf. I still have that picture of your piano scarf. The the infamous piano scarf. Oh yeah, scarf. my piano scarf. Got to have that. And then, if you look in the back <laughs> back there, is, is, there's a piano sitting back there. That's that beautiful Piani. Oh. 
back there in the back. Yeah, you're getting a view of the little cabin here today, but uh, we do a lot of music out of here and uh, just amazing, amazing place to, to work. Excellent entertainment. And, uh, Talk about your company just a little bit so people understand, you know, what it is you're, oh, yeah, you you're all about. So we got a multitude of things we do. I'm, I'm a record producer. That's what Hit. I do also. Record own. producer. Hit. Record, <laughs> record producer. <laughs> uh, I'm a mastering engineer as well. And uh, matter of fact, a lot of the records you hear that I just talked about actually engineered them, produced them, and mastered them, which a lot of people don't do. But it's wearing multiple hats. We get to do many things. My company is called Axon, A-X-O-N Entertainment. Axon Entertainment Incorporated. We actually do A to Z in the music industry. And I've actually got to work with you, Winnie, taking yeah. one of your songs Thank and you. doing some stuff with that too. Yeah, people had no sunshine. idea that, you know, you do the things. Yeah, we, we did it. That was good too. I you love did the it. Thank you. So it you Thank smile. you. Yeah. yeah. Well, Reminds me of the Partridge family and all that. We talked about that. You know? <laughs> I, yeah, know. That I know. Really I know. I cool. know. Thank but, you. Uh, had a but, blast. So, our, yeah. So, our company so does all kinds table? of things. You know? what, what, what else is, what else is coming up for, for, um, the music into the next year for you we've got the grammys oh on the table okay, you've so got a number one right now that's leading into that then where do we go i, I need a break <laughs> you need I a vacation, right? so, you're like I, oh, I do i do i finished uh i'm ready let's go baby let's yeah. go <laughs> <laughs> got our so you gotta wear my glasses because the sun's so bright you gotta wear shades you know it's great <laughs> no you're just oh my cool. gosh um I'm going to go fishing. I know I'm going to do some fishing trips. I'm looking forward to that. I got some of that coming up. Um, basically, we have massive promotion and marketing, which starts now for Grammy Push and all the records and putting everything out. Rooted in Song being an Americana album is just now going out. People are just now hearing it. We are getting rave reviews on this record. And again, I I'm telling you, this is my year. <laughs> I just know it. I mean, everything's going like, oh my gosh, 2020 COVID. I'm like, I know, but I'm gangbusters this year. I just can't believe it. Everything's going just crazy, but very, very thankful and blessed. Just, you know, God has blessed me richly beyond belief. I'm, I'm so blessed with health, life, and, uh, and have this beautiful studio to record in and do music. But so many things on the horizon, though, uh, three things to go to the Grammys. And this, this record, Janky, is a blues album, and it's very unique. This guy plays on a cigar box guitar. It's got a bass strings on it and guitar strings on it. I'm not lying. This is crazy. And a suitcase, a suitcase <laughs> drum set. It's a suitcase with two drums on it. He goes up and down like this, banging his feet, and it kicks the kick drum, and it kicks the snare. It's boom, check, boom, check. And it's so funny. He's got a little hi-hat going with it. It is so cool. And it is one of the best blues albums. It's so different. We call it Texas Sippy because cool. it's Mississippi Delta blues mixed with Hill Country, Texas blues sound. It's the most unique blues record I have ever heard in my life. And I've heard thousands of blues albums and is the most unique sounding, just put together album. It's, it's, I don't know how to explain You have to, it's janky. There's no other way to say J-A-N-K-Y, janky. So, so awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's janky, so I can't fun. wait to hear this. It's great. It is so good. <laughs> You're just so always so full of energy. Now, I just want to step back for a minute because, you know, actually, every time we've talked, people have gone back and listened to these shows over and over and over and over again. And your story is so unique. I want to touch on that again. Let's go from the beginning just really quickly. I want to go through some of the hardest things you've been through so people can recap why this is so important and such a pinnacle spot for you at the moment. Because you've been rock star and i mean rock star who had long yep, hair rock. rock star you've been at the bottom and at the top let's talk about that really quick oh yeah oh yeah well I'll, I'll, it's these stories are so long so i'll give you a real brief on it um i have been on top of the world with winning grammys and i've been on the bottom floor with almost losing everything i've had uh which i've been there and done and it is a tough road to go through uh, the Lord has lifted me up and kept me through all of this. Uh, I almost had to file uh, bankruptcy a, a long time ago, but boy, I mean, God just kept me in his graces and I, and I got through things. But I'll, I'll tell you, when your wife gets ill, I have a Grammy contending wife. Her name is Katie Gaby. She's Beautiful. been on four records now that are outstanding. They've been up for Grammy contention. 
And uh, matter of fact, uh, she's singing on Chad Prather's record. That's out right now. <laughs> yeah. And I can't believe and then you'll, you'll, for her to even be singing now, it's just amazing. Uh, her voice is outstanding, just a saint of a singer. And uh, she's actually on Jeff's record, uh, Daddy's Glove. She's on that, is, is on that other records up for uh, Rooted in Song. It's up for Grammy contention. You guys just got to check that stuff out. But when that happens, when you are struck down and your wife is almost dying to the point of you're going to, you know, th these are things. Studio's a thing. Consoles are things. This, this stuff's all a thing. But when you get ready to lose everything you have because – and you have no choice to do, and your wife becomes is your everything. Not I'm not talking about monetarily. That's that's one thing. But you get ready to lose everything you have because that's your wife and your your spouse. To me, that's my everything. God, family, and then work. And that happens, and you don't know what to do. I'm gonna tell you this story right now because you were in the room where this happened. God spoke to me in this room at this very seat right here. This is I, I try to do this out tearing up because this is something else. So Katie got deathly ill, very ill. No one in the United States could help her or save her. We didn't know what to do. She has a one in a million autoimmune disease. It's multiple disease. Multi they're not disease, they're disorders. And they're all put together. And it's very, very, very rare. Well, it affect her lungs. It affect her, 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 her walking or every, everything. I mean, it, it's, you start just to die. And basically what's happening is your, this is your uh, blood cells. For an average human being, our cells do this over about, Oh, 80 years or so. And this is bad because that's when we're eventually going to pass out and die. What a normal person does is over 80 years. Katie went like this, poof, in a matter of a few years. So that was, you know, detrimental. We went everywhere we could to try to figure out. Knowing the United States could help, help us. We found this doctor in Germany. And the way we found that doctor was from a friend of mine who helped me build this studio right now. <laughs> this cabin studio is from him. The guy was amazing. He came in, he came, I, I needed these bathrooms built for this studio. I had to get these bathrooms built. Everybody's like, why do you need to build bathrooms? You're, and at that time I'm telling Katie, I need to get the bathrooms built. She's like, what do you want to build bathrooms for? I, I don't have a job. You're trying to do everything. We're just launched a studio. I mean, just launched the place. And I'm like, you need to get these bathrooms built? I was out praying. God said, build these bathrooms. And I know it's crazy. It sounds nuts. <laughs> But that is what I heard. I went and I said, Katie, we need to get these bathrooms built. I said, I just, I really feel we need to do this. And I'm waiting for her to just say, you're nuts. But she said, you know, why, why, why? She goes, you know what? But if God told you that, I'll, I'll, I'll go with it. So uh, it's a long story. I'm going to make it as short as I can. I call everybody I know to come help frame these bathrooms. No one shows up. I called David, the guy that helped me build this studio and frame it. And I said, David, can you meet me? He said, yeah, I'll come meet you. I can't get a hold of the guy because David is so hard to get a hold of, but I call him on Monday and his, his answering person answers the phone. Her name was Kay Lane for construction. This is Kay. I said, Hey, Kay, it's Chuck. I know David's not in the office because you know, it takes three weeks to get a hold of the guy. Is there any way possible, any way possible you can get a hold of him for me? Cause I need to frame these bathrooms. Well, he's in the office. You want to talk to him <laughs> now? He said, yeah, yeah. Patch me through. Hey, Chuck, how you doing? I said, I'm doing great. I need to get these bathrooms ready. How about I meet you this Wednesday? This Wednesday? Yeah, man. I'll clear my schedule because he's the only guy in town that does logs and cabins and frames and all this kind of stuff. I'm like, you got it because I'm in Texas. You know, it's not really a log cabin place. And I live in a log cabin. That's how I met him, which is Willie Nelson's house. That's another story. But, <laughs> but anyway, he shows up through a rainstorm with a flat tire and meets me at the house. And his words out of his mouth and does nothing about Katie being sick. I walk out to him. I said, David, how you doing? He goes, I'm doing great. How's your wife, man? I said, do you really want to know? He said, yeah, I really want to know. And that floored me because he had no idea. I said, well, she's doing okay. She's kind of, you know, da, 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 just chit chat, you know, he goes, okay. So I go and I get my stuff. We get in the car, we drive around to the studio. I get ready to get out of the car. And he looks at me and goes, Chuck, what's really wrong with your wife? I said, do you really want to know? He said, I really want to know. I said, she has dermatomyositis, polymyositis, interstitial cystitis, everything. she got every cystitis known to man. I don't know what's wrong with her, David. I, I, I have no idea. He said, huh. And we're, just, we're this close to each other, you know. And he just goes, huh. And he's trying to tell me something, but he doesn't know how to say it. So it's uncomfortable when you're that close to somebody. You know? So I back up and, uh, and I said, okay, so I'll get out of the car. I go unlock the studio and right there at this door over here, 
I turned the alarm off and everything froze. Time froze. I froze. Everything went black. Just black. My hair stood up on my hair, my hands, my head, hair everywhere. And I, I just, I didn't see anything. I was like, I'd left the building, Elvis. I was gone. And I heard a voice strong as I'm talking to you now. Listen to what this man has to say to you. He has a word for you today. You got me, God. You got me. You got me. I hear you. David walks in. He said, Chuck, the studio looks great. Because, I mean, at that point, everything just came right back. And it's like, it, it felt like it had been, you know, hour. It only been seconds, you know, for everything to happen. But up in the door, Dave comes in. He goes, looks great. I said, yeah, you weren't here for grand opening. And in my mind, while I'm talking to him, I'm like, did this really happen? Did God just speak to me? Did I just hear this? You know? And uh, and because it's going through your head, you know, because it, it went so fast, you know, but but it really didn't. It felt like a lifetime. He comes in, he sits down at the console right beside me here, and he says, I want to tell you something. That's when it hit me again the second time. Everything went black. Listen to what this man has to say to you. He has a word for you today. I said, David, you have my undivided attention. <laughs> He said, several years ago, my daughter got sick and my son got, my son was hit by a car. He almost died. It, he ended up, did die. It was a horrible thing. He went through so much tragedy. And he said, but, but, you know, I trusted God would get me through this and, and, and all that. But when I lost my daughter and his daughter died too, he lost two siblings, mm -hmm. you know, unbelievable. I mean, his, his, his son, his daughter, 16 years old. And I didn't know how she died or what happened. He said, well, she got cancer and blah, blah, blah. We well, told me the whole story of what had happened. It's too long to tell y'all now, but I'll brief it down as quick as I can. He basically went and said, I met this guy in Germany. He found a cure for psoriasis. I think, you know, uh, he did all these things. He couldn't save my daughter, but, you know, it, it's a chance. Chuck. Maybe something you might want to look into for Katie. We never talked about the bathroom. I went to Germany. We met him. I got this. It's Katie's own blood, her own urine. Urine. Her lungs were healed. They were scarred for life. Never supposed to be working again. Her lungs were healed from that. Healed. No scarring. Grammy records. Now, there's no way to say that except God. That's the only way that happens. That is not coincidence. That is the Lord. And I am blessed. You are blessed. That is a beautiful, beautiful story of synchronicity, faith, and remembrance. And I think, uh, you know, many people in music are very open about their faith. And you, you always hear people go up and accept their rewards and say, I owe this to God. I owe this to my creator. I owe this oh, to, sure. you know, over and over and over again. And you're telling that story. You're, you're talking about Especially in the time now, Chuck. I mean, especially what we've been oh, yeah. through in the last few months. Know. You know, each time we talk, each time we're we're going through this, that's really what this is about. Music is the great creator. It's the language between us. It's the speaking it of the heart, together. right? That's right. Yeah. But here, you know, your studio, your purpose, brought this fellow to you. Under all circumstances and all of his pain and suffering, and here he shared, and now she's healed. Yeah, she's doing well. Her lungs are, and she's doing a lot better. There, there's. It's um, he had the doctor. Doctor Keith has an 86 percent cure rate for cancer. Now, Katie doesn't have cancer. She has an auto autoimmune disorders. He has 46 percent cure rate in that world. I think it was yeah, 40 42 percent, 86 for one, 42 on the other for for Katie. So. The diseases are continuing to get her. The things are getting to her. The disorders are getting to her and all that. It's going to happen. You know, we, we, we know what's going on. But at the same time, we have faith. We live by faith every day. We're strong. We're blessed. We got to sing. She got to sing in the studio the other day, which was an amazing treat, you know, because every time we do it, we don't know if it's the last time or not. And she continues to push forward. Uh, she's happy and healthy and, and uh, I'm blessed. So uh, yeah, we're really great. And they have this studio to be able to work in. And this is God's studio. It ain't mine. Yeah, I got amen. plaques in this place that says it's God's studio. Amen. And giving thanks because people helped me build the studio. I couldn't have done it on my own. And then of all these things that happened and all the faith of people that came in to help me, because the truth is these doors were donated to me. 
These doors in the studio were donated to me. This, these, the floors were donated to me. They were, they were helped. I got helped with these floors, which is amazing because that story in itself, the amount of money that was bid for the floors that I had a friend of mine do and the amount the lady wrote me a check for was to the penny. Wow. She did not <laughs> know the cost. She donated money, gave it to me to the penny. Check this out. Going to Germany. We had people help us, church and folks and all help us. Check this out. To the penny. The cost, I kept track of everything, wrote all down the cost of everything it was. When we got back and did all the expenses, my hair is standing up right now because you're just, again, the book is called Unbelievable because it's coming. To the penny. Everything that was donated to was to the exact cent. Not a penny more or a penny less. I do not make this up. You can't make this up. This stuff, I, I tell you, I got chills right now. This is amazing. My neck and everything. <laughs> this happens, you know, because of it faith, because I believe and I know God is real. You know, it's amazing. He's it's blessed true. me with music and everything. So the book? Unbelievable, or is it? Now that's the book. I've been writing it for a few years. I got uh, some manuscripts I actually started doing now, starting getting through the process a little bit more. I'm going to give it a little bit of time because there's some things in there. I, I really prayed about, should I go ahead and get this out now? When should I put this out? And I know it's not time yet because there's still more chapters that are being written and done. And again, more unbelievable things that are happening. And you just, you just, either you believe it or you don't. Either yeah, you, you can't make it up. Either you believe the guy or you don't. That's, That's all right. there is to it. And I don't have anything to hide. It's here. I'm just, I'm laying it out. This is how it is. So I'm a blessed guy and unbelievable things happen to me. And because it's unbelievable, I said, you know, that's the title of the book. Unbelievable. I love it. it. So it's up and coming. It. It'll be out before long, but I'll let everybody know. When we do, I'll meet with you. We'll have a meeting and you get to hear it and see it. And uh, we'll talk. I want to be right there. I want to be right there. I, you guys are awesome. And, and send all my love to Katie because she is an amazing talent and she is a trooper on this earth plane for, you know, really walking through the oh, yeah. hardest things with nobility and with grace, especially oh, grace, and it's tough. you know? Yeah, and that's and very you, nice you say. I think so too. I agree with you 100% in that. I really do. And you are a rock. You are the... I'm the rock star. Mm, yeah, you're the rock husband. That's what you are. You're the rock husband and uh, you still find time to do what you need to do in collaboration with other people at the level of bringing it home. And I think that really speaks volumes because, you know, we always think of music out there as something we take and listen to and it's inspirational to us. But the stories that go on behind it, the things that happen behind that, the things that, you know, these are people too. And that's what you're that's showing. Right. You are heart and soul a faith-based person and um, you wear it there's on your a, sleeve. There's a lot. I do. It's, it's straight out. It's on the sleeve, baby. It's on the sleeve. <laughs> I'm, 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 what it, I'm real. It's just, it's, I'm, not, I'm never afraid to hide that either. And uh, folks that work with me know that. And uh, you know, I don't, I don't push Christianity down people's throats. Right? I think everybody should make their own choice in what they want to do in life. But I'm going to walk in testimony to say things that have happened to me. And I'm never afraid to tell somebody my story or what's going on in life or the hardships of, of life and what happens happens to everybody. Everybody has a story. But if I can shed some light on a, on a dark place for you and, or anyone, you know, and, and have them open up and say, wow, I can relate to that. That those are crazy things. Those have happened, things like that have happened to me. And, and if it brings you hope and joy, then I'm glad I get to share it. And I try to do that with music. I try to do that with, with when I speak, I try to do that through my, my consulting firm, my studio uh, recording, all production that we do, you know, every, we do so much in music and uh, we do everything in music from A to Z. You know, we, we literally can take you from when you've started all the way to national or help you do demos and then turn around and, and do music videos, which we do things like, we do everything. And we're, we're actually a record company, you know? So I now have the Cabin Record Company, which has launched three or four different new artists. And uh, now the Cabin Record Company is gonna have three Grammy contenders this year. Woo! So that's pretty, pretty awesome, Woo! man. <laughs> you go, Woo! you go. Right on, Don't right on. Don't yeah. Try. Good Chuck. Good Chuck. Good Chuck. Yeah, absolutely. You know, congratulations. Oh, it's, it's been a fun journey Thanks, to man. watch and be a part of. And, and people don't realize what it takes, especially in today's atmosphere, to really push it out there and be there. 
I mean, this isn't, there's a lot. Yep. There's, this isn't like it used to be, and especially with COVID, now you have to get really creative, but at the same time, streaming is really taking over. So mm -hmm. how are you managing through this? What is it that you're doing in your techniques to move this music out into the world and let everybody know? Well, we, we're, you know, in the recording process, we do multiple things. I actually have uh, friends of mine and artists right now that are recording in multiple places. And we actually do some of the recording here and some of it remotely. And then we tie it all together in the studio. So COVID uh, in a lot of ways has stopped a lot of different process and opened up new processes for recording for everything. I mean, there's a downside always, but there's always an upside to anything because yeah. there's two sides to every coin, you know, and it's, it's out there. there. There's plenty. It opens up some amazing doors, but we, I have personally been traveling. I'm still traveling, but I'm aware of what I'm traveling. I mean, I've been coast to coast and Nashville back and forth, uh, Louisiana, Texas, all over. We've been doing a lot of traveling and uh, went out to South Dakota. Uh, oh, okay. One more thing. <laughs> I got a new whiskey line. Oh my gosh, Chuck's doing whiskey. A line. whiskey line? A whiskey. I am not <laughs> lying. It's called Buffalo Chip American Whiskey. And we run a silver medal with the whiskey out in the San Francisco Spirits competition. Oh, Buffalo Chip American you. Whiskey. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. And it, it was great. We did really great with it. It's doing great. We went to Sturgis for the big bike rally. Everybody and their brother out there, you know, that no one got sick or any of that stuff was happening. Everybody was cool. They wore their mask. Everybody was smart, you know, and yeah. there were places where people got together and didn't wear masks or anything, but, but nobody was just on top of each other. People used common sense, which I'm very thankful for, you know, and I watch what I, everybody watched with the, we're all aware, but we're outside, you know, so it was great. We sold like 160 cases in like two oh days. Oh my God. Unheard of. You're, you're like, incredible. Oof. You don't Yeah. Stop. So you're going to have incredible. to taste it. It's fantastic. We have a silver medal, baby. Congratulations. Woo. Yeah. So have it's based out of Nashville. It's really cool. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. It's, it's just now <laughs> going into multiple states. Uh, it's in Tennessee, South Dakota. We're just getting Texas on board. Florida happened last week. So uh, yeah, I'm a mover and shaker making things happen. And uh, you are. glad to be a part of that whiskey company. It's fun. They're great people. They're out of Nashville. We, we're really enjoying it. Woo. You're going to take on all the giants now. So Slowly what makes Buffalo Ship sure. different? Oh, I'll tell you. <laughs> it's smooth like butter. It's got caramel notes. And if you like whiskey and Coke, uh, some people do. It's the best whiskey and Coke I've ever tasted. I'm not lying. It is fantastic. But it's so different. It's, uh, oh, wow, thunder. Boom. I heard if it's that. making my studio shake, it's, it's really out there. We've had some big storms come through. But the whiskey is super, super smooth. Um, it's, it's just the, the notes of flavors of, of everything are just, oh, they're, I don't know how to describe it. You're just going to have to taste it. It's so good. It's so smooth. It's uh, a super nice oh, it's a blend of two beautiful bourbons and a nice whiskey put together. It's all blended. It's like four to six years age stuff. Really, really smooth. Really, really good. You can't win a silver medal unless it's really good. So it's really good. Did you, are, are you going to have it and showcase it at the Grammys? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, we already have it. We already have it uh, strapped. It's uh, the the. It's already over a, a trailer. It's it's amazing. It's beautiful. It looks so cool. The sip sip the chip is everywhere. Sip the chip. Sip the chip. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, you yeah. hear the jingle that goes with it? Oh yeah, I'm already started it. I already got it. Going, sip the chip. <laughs> you know, yeah, got the guitar over there. Like. <laughs> Well, people don't know that you are like a serious metal guitarist, like you or rock. Guitarist. Yeah, I was. A, I was. I but played a, some rock. You know, the long, the long hair, oh, yeah. the whole bit. I had really long hair. Oh, yeah. Long hair to hippie rock star. Oh, yeah. You, oh, yeah. you did it. I did. I played. I got to play in L.A. And, uh, you know, we've talked about some of the folks we've hung out with and uh, different folks out there. And, yeah, I was the true rock star. I had uh, had hair, <laughs> hair but I, I played. And uh, yeah, I had a chance to play with some really great people over the years. And, uh, and it's been great. It's been great for the career. I've really enjoyed it. I've always produced. I've always been recording. And been doing that since I was a kid. So it all just kind of morphed together and I stayed with it. And I still play on tracks. I play on music and do things every now and then. But I'm an executive producer as well as a producer and do multiple things. So I don't, I'm not a studio musician to play that anymore. That's not my forte. I hire great people to do that. And that's how you get great records. But no, I produce and do those things. I still play. I mean, I play all the time. I still get the guitar and play. I play down here, you know, when no one's listening. <laughs> and so, yeah, yeah. Now what... Where is the sound going to? You know, Nashville's changed over the last few years, and uh, oh, drastically. 
Tell yeah. us, tell us yeah. what you see happening in the music industry and what trends you you're seeing. All right. That's a great question. You know, uh, sound of, of uh, let's take Nashville real quick. And, and I, I work LA, Nashville, New York, and all the sounds basically in music, you've got three major locations that your music is really done. Your, your pop music, your uh, happy go lucky, great sounds like that. And, and, and all that really, that comes out of LA. A lot of that stuff comes out of that market. Uh, a lot of great stuff comes out of LA phenomenal. And there's rap and stuff out of there. New York is your main rap. That's where you get a lot of the rap and a lot of stuff like that. And uh, there, there's jazz, you know, stuff like that. Nashville is country, which everybody knows is country, but it's changed a lot. Rock is coming out of there tremendously. Now rock yeah. is also a big part of LA, of course. But um, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's all changing. It, I think the morph of sound, and morph is the word, everything's morphing over into new territories, new sound, which I love because it creates new stuff. Our Americana record that we just put out, the, the, I was telling you about Rooted in Song, an American music experience. There is all styles of music in the Americana flow. And it's mm -hmm. on that record. You're going to hear that. Nebraska's on there. Then you hear Lower Alabama. Then you get into this Janky song. We talk about Janky. He's on the record. It's really cool. Um, Jason Spradling got this uh, Trailer Park Kathy, which is hilarious. Oh, it's so fun. Daddy's Gloves from Jeff Claiborne. There's so many great songs on that album, and it's a real beautiful flow. It's got so much sound, you know, but it's acoustic felt with all kinds of influences. Really unique. Americana is more like the sound of we're hearing today of everything. It's a plethora of this, that, and the other hodgepodge. And that's what's going on. I'm hearing more and more of that happening in the world of music today all over. Blues is, is, is starting to come up. Joe Bonamassa is really pushing that kind of stuff. Reminds me of Janky in a lot of ways. That's got kind of thing going on. It's changed. It's really changing. And I think because of the, how we're recording, how we're getting together and the collaboration of things made a big difference in music. And you can do so many styles in so many places. Nashville's not just country anymore. It's still the heart of country, but there's so much, I do, I just did a rock record there and I'm doing more of it back here. Matter of fact, recording, you know, this week uh, here at the cabin for a rock album, but it's, it's unique. Every place is really changing. And I think a lot of that has to do with the COVID experience, and uh, independent music having a new platform to really launch yourself with. I agree. There's just so much out there that people can do now. And so if you had your ideal uh, artist to work with, what genre and what style would that be right now? Well, I work multiple genres and multiple styles. So that's, uh, that's, uh, that's tough for me because really I do every, I do, I do country. I love that. I do gospel. I love that. I did a blues album, which is fantastic. And Americana is so great because it's a plethora of everything. Those are really my forte uh, genres there. I've been doing that in jazz. I do. I like jazz. I, I really enjoy working jazz and doing that. But it's that I don't really have just one because I work with so many and, and use so many with so many different styles of albums and, and the comedy. I mean, I did a comedy album, you know. And uh, awesome. it's win really? number one. Ah, Jeff Rayner, <laughs> number one. Oh, man, that's unbelievable. so great. Hey, Congratulations. Man, that's unheard of. Yeah, he's he's just he's bouncing off the walls too. It's it's unbelievable uh, to get a record do that that fast. So, really, yeah, I, I mean, I love doing all that stuff. It's great. It, it's you know what? It's testimony to your heart and soul, though. And and so let's go back into sound and sound quality a little bit. You have an ear. You have an ear for mastering and for sound. What technology are you using right now, and where do you see the technology changing? Well, uh, today's music is focused a lot in digital world and a lot of home recordings and things like that for a lot of the artists. Now, the professional artists were still using studios and you know use your own home studio a lot of that stuff, but the gear is 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 really uh, changing. Now, right back behind me, uh, you can't see this console so well back here, but the recording console. That console, there was two of those tied together. Yeah, it's a big old board back there. There you go. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yep. That console back there was the organ. used uh, for uh, episode one, The Phantom Menace. So it was, ah. a, it was two of these guys tied together to do that stuff. Yeah, it came out of L.A. It's a great console. That uh, that board back there was um, one like it or that one was, was – I can't remember what the whole – story is but they're uh um we're hooked together it's analog console i still do everything analog i still mix old school i mean i, I record digitally and stuff like that but i still push the every mix you hear from me every mix you hear from me not one mix is automated not one there is wow. not a mix i have done in 20 years that has been an automated mix i matter of fact i don't think i've ever automated a mix much i can do it i have the ability but i don't do it 
I get everything where I want it and I hand and I mix it the way I want it mixed. It's, there's an art to that and there's a sound to it and you can't reproduce it. And okay. that's what I like about mixing. And I use state of the art, everything. I mean, microphones, everything we have are state of the art here. I keep up with the technology all the time. What's your favorite of, mic? Of, of, uh, oh boy. I have a Lawson, uh, Gene Lawson made me a custom mic. It's a gold mic. I would love to show it to you, but I have to get up and go get it. And yeah, no, no, go get it. We want to see it. Bring it over oh, here. Hey, come I on now. Go, I couldn't uh, grab it and get it that fast and get it over here. It's stuck right. on the stand in, in one of the rooms, but uh, it's a gold mic and it, it's a beautiful microphone. It's, it's a Telefunken 251 is what it's modeled after. Gorgeous microphone. And I love Neumann's. I use a lot of Neumann mics uh, everywhere. And, uh, and there's another mic out there called Vanguard that's out. It's yeah, really unique. I've I love those two. But they're one they're made out in LA. They're out there by, by mm -hmm. you guys. And uh it's great. I, I got so many great mics in here in Peluso. I love Peluso mics. They're one of my favorite microphones. They're my my piano. Why? Using for vocals. Uh I love Peluso Why? microphones. Why in fact I'm like even use I just put them on my side. I use them all the time. They're great mics. What what's the thing with a Peluso mic that you love? Why? Why a Peluso? Why Peluso mics? Why I like them so much? They're warm. Uh, the presence is great. They're also large diaphragm, and everything they make is quality one. And they're it's like buying four and five ten thousand dollar microphones for less than half that price, and they're all great. Everything about their quality is really really good. That's why I like them. It's like Neumann. I love Neumann. All the I'm on, I'm speaking on a Neumann mic right now, so that's yeah. what I'm talking to you on a great Neumann microphone. And they're just German engineering. There's nothing like it in the world. It's great. You know, I am German, you know, but Ebert is German. <laughs> E-B-E-R-T. I am German. Yes. I do. I'm a German Cherokee Indian person. You know, there you wow. Go. So, right on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you, yeah. You've got it all in you. And you know what? People oh, yeah. that don't do music or don't use microphones on a regular basis don't understand how tantalizing that conversation is. Because when you have a favorite mic, literally oh, yeah. it's your baby. And you take great care of it and you oh, love yeah. it and you like it's to hold it. You like to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, I want to love that puppy. About that. Yeah. I love it. Seriously. And, uh, oh, yeah. Sound. And the tone, it's two, they're tube, you know, yeah. a lot of these are tube mics. That's a tube mic. And then, uh, you know, I got different condensers and different, different, you know, sounds of different microphones and FET mics and so on. But there is something about uh, like the vocal lead vocals pretty much on most albums I've done in the last, everything out of the cabin has been the lead vocals pretty much been through that loss in microphone. And cause it sounds so good. Plus, you know, having, you know, a hundred thousand dollar recording console. And then my outboard gears, you know, $80,000 worth of outboard gear. And you put all that together, you start getting great sound. And that's the thing people don't realize. It doesn't matter if you're at home or in your closet or in a big studio, it all comes down to great mics, great converters, great preamps, and more than anything that you know how to capture the sound, you right. know, engineering and getting the sound right. And then you have to right. know how to mix it. And mixing is one part. Mixing is really, I, I'm a mastering engineer. I'll tell you about that because mixing is how you get it all together. Mastering, that's the magic. That's what makes the sound go from here to here. That's what makes the sibilance come out. The EQ is great. Mastering is the greatest art of engineering in my world for audio that there is. And I've been a mastering engineer for 15, 16 years now, 17 So what years. drove you to become a mastering 20. engineer? I forgot. I've been, I've been, I think it's been about that long. I've been doing it so long. So, uh, yeah. And you say I have the ear. Yeah. I have a mastering ear so I can, I hear all that stuff. So I'm, I'm a little unique because I produce, I mix, I engineer and I master. Most people don't just do all that. You don't not do it well. I mean, you do one of the, and, normal, and I, I tell everybody don't do all that because really it's, it's not good to do all that stuff. But if you have the mental ability to do that, to shift your mind and listen, because listening for mix, totally different than mixing for mastering. Tracking, totally different than mixing. You right. have to hear all the different aspects and know the right mic. Like if I had you in the studio, I'm gonna listen to different microphones until I find the right mic that's gonna work with your voice for your timbre. And say, okay, that's the mic we need to use. That's the sound we need to get the best capture of your voice to tape or you know, the hard disk. And then what really makes it happen, which most people miss recording is the producer. <laughs> You've got to have the producer because the producer is who grabs your voice, your sound takes you to the next level. Without a producer, you can sing a song. 
but a producer can get the best out of you in the world if you find the right guy that you deal with. So, and I love producing. I love, I love watching people grow in the studio, just grow, grow, grow. I watch them. Every time they come out of the studio, I had a guy say the other day, Chuck, I've been working with you for like over a year and I have gone from here to here. I said, Jason, you went from here to here. I said, you have a national record out. I said, you have a song out. You are on a Grammy contending album, bro. You went from here to here. You know, I said, because you listen, we work and, and, you know, you worked with a producer. So yeah, it makes a difference. It does make a difference. There's nothing like that. Actually, when someone can pull out of you, it's like the world's greatest coach. You know, you look at all these ice skaters that contend for the Olympics and what makes them their coach and that's their, right. their drive and their willpower. And that's what a producer is. You, you know, all the skills, you know what it takes, you know what you're hearing and you're an objective outside influence to that. You're holding space. It's so many things. It's no, oh, yeah. no little Huge. task. You're, you're doing it all. And uh, you're bringing the best out of someone else's spirit, which is That's one of the greatest. Part. That's gifts. my favorite part. Bringing the best out of someone's spirit, bringing the best out of them. You know, when you work with me and people say, well, Chuck, how do I work with you? You call me. I'll work with everybody. <laughs> I had a guy call me out of, out of North Carolina or just or South Carolina. He called me just out of nowhere and said, Hey man, I, I saw you do this and I'm, I, I saw your stuff on the Grammy post. All that. Would you work with me? I said, well, yeah, let's see what, let's talk about what we need to do. I mean, there's steps to it. I got to hear your music. Got to go through things. There's some steps to do, but yeah. And guess what I'm doing? I'm producing an album with him right now and he's coming in this week to record. And he went from here to here and he's going to go to here and he's going to keep going. It's really good stuff. You Matter know, fact, so we have some of the guys that, that played with, uh, oh my gosh, some uh, really amazing artist, uh, uh, Matchbox 20. Some of the guys that played Matchbox played on his record. Awesome. Awesome. You know, yeah, had a great time recording it. Your enthusiasm and your excitement for life and just keeping it grounded and going into everything, but at the same time, holding that space of what I call high spirit and bringing that into everything. That's, that's, that's what right. funnels this. That's, that's right. That's the gift you have. And thanks, Winnie. it's, it is really true. And from the heart, from the moment I met you and uh, your piano scarf. <laughs> I love the piano scarf. I'll be wearing it at the Grammys. I promise that thing's, that thing's great. I'll have it on. I will wear it. Man, that's I great. love it. Got to have your piano scarf. I got, I got matching piano socks now. <laughs> I do. I'm wearing pants. I'm gonna be at the Grammys. I'm wearing the socks and the scarf, baby. I'm gonna have yeah. it all. Be decked out. Well, I hope you all win. I hope you all really just bring it home. And and you know, I do too. It, this is this is a personal best. What people don't understand about music, I think, is they take for granted what goes into making it. And um, the Grammys always struck me as such a deep reminder of all the beautiful souls putting their faith into their personal best each time. Oh yeah. Hours and hours of time going to a song. Most people don't realize that you come in and you just record a song. It doesn't work that way. We literally will spend an average, an average song for a national release takes about 60 to 80 to even a hundred hours to do a three to four minute song. If you're going to go national and do it right, that's what it takes. People have no idea that it takes that long. Now, you can do it sooner. You can do it quicker. We've had things do that before and not spend that much time. It depends on what it is. I mean, there's, there's exceptions to all those, all those rules, but an average record takes a lot of time. If you want it to sound great and be something very unique and out there and be the best it can be, it's, it's, people don't have a clue that it takes that much time and energy and effort to do it all, but it does. It takes, it takes a lot. And you know, another thing as a testimony to being a great producer is lightheartedness and patience. You have a tremendous Lots patience. Of it. You better have a lot of it. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. and you see the way through the, you you're a leader, you're leading through, through the trees. It's a bit of like the Moses effect. And it's not a joke because you can take one instrument and go the wrong trail. And then you have to oh, yeah. back oh, yeah. up and say, Hey, you know what? That's not going to work. We need to do this. Well, or, there's a great, great example right there. We did Rooted in Song in the American Music Experience. I'm telling you about the record. You should see the album cover. It's fantastic. It was designed by Grant Malloy Smith. The record cover is great. And then Scott 
uh, Lindsey, who is the janky boy who plays all the bluesy jank stuff, who's actually on that record too as well. He did the cover art. He put it all together after Grant's drawing and turning it. It's a beautiful work of art. You really should look at the album cover. It's roots, it's tree, and you see the, the instruments hanging all over. It's really awesome cover. Get to look at it. It's really great, great artwork. Where does, Scott's where does, an amazing graphic artist. Excuse me. Where does everybody find all of this fabulous uh, you can artistry? Find everything. You can find everything at your favorite digital outlet. It's everywhere. iTunes, Amazon, YouTube, name it out there. Wherever you listen to your music, it's out there. Deezer, Tidal, uh, it's out there. Well, you give know, us the iTunes, titles of everything so people uh, can go look it up. Okay, so here are the titles. First one, Rooted in Song, R-O-O-T-E-D, Rooted in Song, an American Music Experience and American Music Experience. It's a yellow album cover. It says Rooted in Song on it. It's really, really cool. Parchment paper looking thing. Really, really awesome. The second album is Janky. J-A-N-K-Y. It's a really cool name. Janky. It's all janky. You have to look up what janky means. It's really cool. J-A-N-K-Y. It's, oh, oh, do I, I do? Hold, 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 hold. <laughs> I just got this in the mail today. Woo! The janky experience. Look at that. Really cool. Janky. Janky. Love it. Janky. Love it. There's, yeah, janky. So anyway, it's it's really cool. That's the album cover. It's going to be, uh, it's out everywhere that you, you get your music. It's called Janky. Because I want to make sure it's right. It's Hill Country Foot. Yeah, Hill Country Foot Stomp is what it's called. Because he's banging up and down on these, you know. That's look incredible. At this, cover. this is a cool cover. I guess. Can't it's wait to see that amazing. performance. Let's see if I can get the good. Oh yeah. Right on. Oh, see that yeah. is a suitcase, and that's one's gar. Now he plays a, a cigar boss guitar in that. Look at the cotton field back there. It's real. It is so real. He is such a sweet, wonderful guy. I love him so much. What a great friend. Okay, I got to tell you the story real quick about Janky, and then I will go to the third. Let me do the third record. I'll come back to Janky. Okay, the third record because there's a story. It's awesome. The third <laughs> record is. Y'all, shut up by Chad Prather. Number one, just look for a number one album. It's out there. iTunes, everywhere. And he's in a straight jacket. Oh, the cover is so great. Y'all, shut up. It's so funny. <laughs> he is so, so funny. And it, it's humorous as can be. Uh, it's, it's great. It's really great. It's, yeah. it's got to be. It wouldn't go to number one if it wasn't. It's just, it's so, so good. Perfect it's timing in our world, right? We need a little humor and a little Oh, it's funny. It'll make you laugh so much. It's so funny. All right, I'm going to go. All right, let me tell you this out. janky story real quick. So Scott Lindsay, I have known him since, I, which blows me away. I've known him since I was 17, 18 years old. We used to play when we rehearsed music in these uh, storage shed container places where you go rent your storage and you put all your stuff in it, you know, and all over the place. Well, we rented one out and that was ours. And Scott had one right down the street and he had a little, little band. Well, we call them the puppets. And it, it, that wasn't the name of his band, but we called it, we just called it, yeah, it's the puppets over there. Cause they were younger than us, you know, kids playing music. And we were young too. Anyway, so I, you know, we played music together and all that. And then I leave, go play, you know, all over the place and music and so on. Well, I don't, haven't run into Scott in years. I mean, years. About two years ago, I hooked back up with Scott out of the blue. I post, I said, I'm looking for a new graphic artist. Scott chimes in, well, I'm a graphic artist. Da, 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 I do this work and this work. And I said, I, and I didn't even think about who it was. I'm like, Scott Lindsay. He said, you know, da, 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 Chuck, is that you? Yeah, Scott, is that you? Oh my gosh. You know, we remembered each other. He has done every album cover I've done in the last, he did Chad Prather's album cover. He did that janky album cover you just saw. He did Jeff Claiborne's album cover. He did Rooted in Songs album cover. He is, he is a fantastic graphic artist, nationwide graphic artist. He owns Abstract Explosion, and he's in Austin now. Great friend. We've hooked up. We're actually going to go fishing together. What an amazing thing out of all those all that time. And, and, he's still, and he's a heck of a player, man. He's awesome. I had him on my Cowboy and Rockstar show that we do on Facebook every now and then, every few weeks. And uh, he was great. He was great. I'm going to have him back and do some more stuff with him. But isn't that amazing? I mean, he hooks up. And now he's on a Grammy contending album. It's, that record's up for a Grammy. So he said, I've helped him co-produce the record and, and mix it and, and, and do the you know mastering on it and all that. So, wow, what an amazing how that works, you know, and just people, you know, you never know, which is a great thing. You never know. Always do your best in your life all through your walk and always be friend to everyone and be kind because you never yes. know when you're going to meet them again 
when it's going to come back around. And if you work with them, love them or whatever, I always spread the love because it's a great, it's the right thing to do. It's the right thing. It is the and, right and thing to do. Here we are working together and building each other up. It's just, it's awesome. We need that. We need the love today, especially. So where can people find you? Tell where can we find what? You. Where can people find you? Me? Where you can find me? Well, you can find me at chuckebert.com. That's www.chuckebert.com. You're going to find my consulting firm there. That's one side of the business we do. We actually own a consulting firm. We, matter of fact, Buffalo Chip Whiskey, we're marketing and doing all that side of it. That's a big thing that we do and part, part of my company. I got a really cool logo too. You have to see the C and E. It's really cool. It's awesome. <laughs> and uh, uh, that's part of it. Did and he do it go too? To Axon. Do what? Did he do it too? Did he do that graphic work too? No, I had somebody else do my logo. He does that kind of stuff too, but I had somebody do my logo and then he doctored it up, of course. Yeah. You know, but that's uh, really cool. But um, he's uh, chuckebert.com. You can find me there. You also find me at Axon, A X A X X O N. That's Axon, four letters, A X O N. And everybody says, Chuck, you talk so fast. But it's axonentertainment.com. And the reason I talk so fast and what Axons are, because in my brain, my accents fire very, very fast. And so all your information has gone through accents. Accents are in your brain. That's how the thought process happens. It all goes through accents, just like that lightning fast. So yeah, quick on the wit, quick on the go and do. But I do lay back. I do. I am calm. I do have a good time with a lot of things. I'm not always a spaz, but uh, big on the fun face. Spaz. <laughs> Big on the faith. You're fun. That's, that's what I love about you is you're fun. Oh, and uh, you see life in a way that most people need to see life. So I love it. Oh, that's sweet. I love it. Thank you for saying that. Well, Chuck, it's been a pleasure great, having you here it. again. Thank you so much for oh, coming. I, I've enjoyed so much. I love it. We got to broadcast from the cabin and got to hang <laughs> out with you. It's been great. Been yeah, great. Wonderful Megan. times. I always love hanging with you. Yeah, making lives brighter after all. So Definitely. Chuck Ebert, everybody, Axon Entertainment, and he's got all these fabulous things out that you need to go check out, download, and listen to now. And uh, we wish you the best in your Grammy contention. And Thank we'll you. have to check in again soon and find out what's going on. So Chuck, we love you here. Yeah. And say hello to you. Katie. I'll see you at the Grammys. Hey, I will That's see right. you there. We're going this year. Plan on, plan on us hanging out. We will. All right. Lots of love awesome. to you. Thanks for okay. having me. I love you. Love you too. Bye guys. You're listening to Making Life Brighter right here. And uh, you can find us on C-Suite Network. You can find us on uh, my YouTube channel on makinglifebrighter.com. And you can also check out all Voice America things. And you can hear Chuck many times over there. So thank you for listening and go jolly everybody. Make somebody else's life brighter. <laughs>